but he's still stopping a little too fast. So now I'm going to make one more adjustment. I want this curve to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go down here and select this keyframe. I'm going to go ahead and break tangents on it. I'm going to select this handle, middle mouse drag. And now our curve is just a little bit, a little bit bigger. But I don't want to go too big. Maybe something like that. Same thing with this up here. I'm going to break tangents. I'm going to click on the, whoops, select the handle. And then I'll middle mouse drag just to make that a little bit bigger. So now our animation will be even more smoother. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll speed back up. And that's it. So there's our animation. So we created a motion path, added some keyframes, and then adjusted it in our graph editor. Okay, um, we're going to add to this. We're going to animate our wheels. Even though I know that kind of answers the uh, question that was asked, I decided I want to go ahead and take this further. So I've already planned out animating these wheels. And what we're going to do that is for these wheels to turn, we need to animate these wheels changing the rotation value in, at least on my screen, the uh, Z value. So what I'm going to do is open up the channel box, make sure I'm at the beginning of my animation. With the wheel selected, I'm going to go up here to my rotate Z value. I'm going to make sure it's selected, right click, and then key selected. So now we just keyed that value. I'm going to go to the end of my animation. All right, if I was to type in here 360, well actually, because the direction mine's going needs to be negative 360. If I type in negative 360 and I go ahead and key this in, then the, that front wheel will turn one full time for the length of my animation. Um, we need our wheel to turn a lot more than that. So to get it to turn more, if I had this to negative 720, then it would turn two times to the very end. Now, if you really want to figure out it exactly, the best way to do it is to measure the distance all the way around your tire, the circumference, and then measure the distance that it has to travel, and then you can figure out how many rotations it needs to turn from the beginning of your animation to the end. All right, mine is actually over 6,000, but I'm going to slow mine down to 6,000, so the wheels won't be exactly spinning the way they should, but it'll be close enough to kind of give you the idea. All right, so I'm going to go to the end of my animation, and I'm going to type in negative 6,000, and I'm going to key that in. So now if we play our animation, our wheels will be turning, at least the front wheel. Except right now, our wheels spin the same speed from beginning to end, and we don't want that. So we're going to do the same thing. All right, with our vehicle selected, I'm just going to take a look at this graph editor, because I'm not going to do a bunch of math to have it match up exactly. So I'm just going to kind of um, do some guesswork, and it should uh, come out decently, or at least enough for this uh, tutorial. All right, so let's pull up our graph editor again. Windows, uh, animation editors, graph editor. Got my vehicle selected, so view frame all. View frame selected. I don't know why it's doing that. Let me reselect again. View frame all. There it is. All right, I'm just kind of looking at this curve to see how it is. Uh, a couple of things I want to know is at these points here, if I select this first point, if you look up here, this first number is our frame, what frame number we're on, at this keyframe is, and then the second number is the value. So this right here is the value at the bottom of our graph, and this value here is the value on the left side of our graph. All right, so at, we got a keyframe at frame 70.328. I'm just going to change that and make it an even 70. Uh, this one here is 163. I'll just make it an even 164. All right. So 70 and 164. So I'm going to select the wheel 
and I'm just going to move our animation and we'll just go ahead to frame 70 and I'm going to create a key there so I'm just going to my rotate Z value and just key selected and then the other one was 164 so now I'm going to move to frame 164 I'm just typing it in down here just to jump to that frame and then entering a keyframe now if we wanted to we could have entered those keyframes anywhere and then in our graph editor with our wheel selected view frame all we could have just selected the keyframe and then just typed in 70 alright so there is we've got our two keyframes right there in the middle I'm gonna switch to my scale tool hold the shift button down and this time let's see I don't want to change the amount of frames I just want to change the value alright so this right here and I'm just trying to match the same kind of curve as we had on the uh, other one and again you can do math and figure all this out exactly but to make it easy um, oops let me undo alright I'm just kind of getting my cursor in the middle alright um, so now I'm just kind of trying to get this to match up a little bit that's probably good there and then of course we need to kind of smooth it out so I'm going to select this keyframe I'm going to break tangents select this handle oh, switch my move tool middle mouse drag it out just kind of line it up select the other one break tangents select the handle now I can middle mouse drag it and I'm just lining that up alright let me select these same thing and you can you can break more so I can select this one and this one down here by holding my shift button down and now I can go at keys and break tangents and it breaks it on both of them so I can select the handle kind of move that out a little bit select the handle move that a little bit alright that should match our animation at least a little bit on our wheels so let's kinda zoom in here and see rewind play so now our tire slows down and now the wheel starts spinning a little faster once it speeds up alright see that again I don't know if you can see it when I'm zoomed out this far but there it is and then he speeds back up alright let's do one more thing uh, just so that there's no question about this this time we're gonna animate this vehicle making a complete stop right here before this red line and then we're gonna have a person come out which I've already got animated I just got it hidden right now and then we'll have the vehicle speed back up afterwards